Now, you're hearing a lot of scuttlebutt talking about how the management of New Japan, frankly, is pissing off a lot of the boys there. They're not happy with how management is treating them. You're getting a lot of disenfranchised guys, reportedly, allegedly, and if it's reported in the wrestling world, there's at least some shred of truth to it, let's be honest here. It absolutely is. So there's something going on, and guys are mad, and guys are getting upset. Whatever reasons they have or don't have doesn't really matter. But we can reasonably believe that it's sick. So this is, of course, going to lead to speculation, especially with the Bullet Club putting out uh, one last Bullet Club shirt, and this could be the end for them in New Japan, and that they could be eventually making their way to WWE, some configuration of that whole crew, whether it be Omega, the Bucks of Suck, fuck Cody Rhodes, Hangman Page, Skrull, where the hell? You know, some configuration of guys that have been in their past or present could be coming to WWE. And look, I'm not here to tell you um, whether you should be excited about it or not. Because frankly, if you're excited at the thought of it, good for you. No skin off my sack. If you think it's dumb and it's stupid, yes, I probably agree with you a little bit more. But again, no real skin off my sack. So you can talk about that in the comments if you want. This really doesn't make much of a difference to me. But what I know is going to come is already coming because this is the type of delusional crap that wrestling fans living in their bubble uh, consume on a daily basis. Is this thought and premise that the Bullet Club would increase the ratings of Raw or SmackDown and increase viewership and the size of the fan base of WWE. And that just seems completely and totally illogical because it is. That is just a big steaming load of crap. It would just, if anything, be more of the same for WWE, not really truly anything different. It really wouldn't be. How would that be any real difference from so many of the other guys they already have on their roster, so many of the guys that they have down in NXT. It's not. It's not really different. And even when you look at this, you try to use All In as an argument to defend the position that these guys can come in and move the needle for them business-wise. You're talking about All In, a show that was pumped up for months, that had some ROH backing to it, you had a massive social media following, and when it came time for it, they had the venue filled out, 10 to 11,000 seats, whatever it was, the WGN America show that aired Saturday evening got a little under 200,000 viewers, and they sold, what, about 25,000 pay-per-view buys? So 25,000 pay-per-views at like 40 bucks a pop, so about a million bucks, give or take. From that revenue plus tickets, you know, probably made as much money off the merch sales as they did anything else, honestly. So it was an ex a successful event for those guys, and good for them. Fuck Cody Rhodes, but good for them. You know, they proved that they could put on a one-off, decent uh, revenue-generating show, and they set out to do it, and they did it. Cool for them. But you're going to tell me, based off of that one show, or even if you want to sit there and talk about, well, they got these other shows where they do New Japan and California, and they get 4,000, 7,000, 10,000 people, whatever the hell they come, that that is automatically going to be something that translates to WWE, and that's just bullshit. Look, you're talking about on WGN America, they had a one-hour show, and they drew less than 200,000 viewers. And when it came time to convert that to pay-per-view buyers, you had 25,000 pay-per-view buyers. So about, what would you say, about 15% return there? 12.5%, whatever the hell it is. I'm not trying to do the math at this moment. 12.5% conversion, where WWE a few years ago when you still had the old pay-per-view business model, you didn't have the WWE network, you might have 3 million people watching Raw, and you might convert that into 200,000 pay-per-view buys. Okay, so that's like 6.5%-ish or so. So the conversion rate there was a little bit better, but the sample size is also much smaller. And it's a significantly smaller sample size to be able to make some type of significant um, statement of fact or anything like that. Especially when you're talking about, still, the raw number less than 200,000 people watch the free shit. But somehow these guys, who primarily wrestle their most notable stuff in a country that's however many goddamn miles away and how many time zones away, are going to significantly move the needle for WWE. You could maybe make that argument if they got 200,000 pay-per-view buys. 
if they got a million people to watch their stuff. But basically what they did was drew an impact wrestling viewership number. You don't hear anybody bragging about that for impact, so why the hell would we brag about that? And they were able to cherry pick, and they made this a big show, and they were bringing in all these alleged big names. There's payoff there, yes. But again, it's talking about that whole hardcore bubble of it's the people that are the hardest of the hardcore that will invest the most money into the product and so forth, that take it the most seriously, that we're primarily interested in. Which is, while you could say with WWE, a larger overall percentage of their fan base and viewership than it has been in years past, that's absolutely true because you're driven away so many of the other fucking fans with how terrible, lousy, boring, and uninteresting and unoriginal the product is, bringing in more of the same, which is exactly what the hell these guys are, is not going to move the needle. And even if you say, well, you bring in these guys, those 200,000 viewers are going to come. You know damn good and well a portion of that viewership that was on that GN special already watched Raw in some configuration any fucking ways. And even if they didn't, you might say, if we want to be naive about it, say all 196,000 viewers that watched the WGM America shit for an hour would come here, how many more fans would you lose? Because again, it was more of the same. But even beyond that, and maybe you could speculate that's a little opinion, blah, 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 a little bias for me, whatever, I don't care. I mean, we, just, we, just, we have to be honest and we have to be realistic about it. You can have biases and beliefs and still be honest and realistic about it. The fact is, they're not going to move the needle. Cody Rhodes used to work for WWE for years. He was never a needle mover. All of a sudden, he goes away from WWE for several years. And he's going to be a bigger fucking needle mover when the only reason he's moving any needle at all is because Cody Rhodes does what Cody Rhodes does and that's latch onto everybody else's work, everybody else's legacy, and tries to suck the life out of it and leech off of it. The fucking American nightmare. Okay, just like his daddy, the American dream. But he's the opposite because... <laughs> Got the fucking lisp like his dad. Went with the blonde hair like his fucking dad. Joined the Bullet Club that was run and founded and got to its height based off of others. Then Cody comes in. He's a coattail guy. Good for him. Makes money doing that. Good for him. How many other people in the world are coattail riders? But now all of a sudden he's going to come in and Kenny Omega is going to come in and all these other guys that a lot of these fans have no fucking clue who they are are going to come in and be a lot of the same type of shit that you frankly already have. And no, this is not just a, a New Japan bias. This is not just a small guy bias. Because if you're talking about it, more of the same, regardless of what that same is, it's not good. If we had 100 fucking Braun Strowmans and you brought in 20 more Braun Strowmans, that's 120 Braun Strowmans. That's about 119 too goddamn many. Then you bring in somebody like a Rey Mysterio and they become the star because they are the one that is unique. They are the one that is different. All these big muscle dudes are exactly the freaking same. So it's about similarity and sameness, not just size. And that's an important distinction to make. But you bring all these guys over. And even let's say there are magical, mystical wrestling fans out there that don't exist, but you believe they do in your heart of hearts. Then let me appeal to your ranting logic inside of you. A combination of emotion and passion, but goddamn cynical common sense when it comes to WWE. What the fuck makes you think that they would bring in the Bullet Club and Vince McMahon would have any trust in them, any belief in them, and any clue what the hell to do with them? And before you sit there and say, well, he did decent things with AJ Styles, AJ Styles is a TNA guy, not a fucking New Japan guy. Furthermore, AJ Styles has become the face that's run the place on SmackDown, and viewership continues to slowly decrease. Does it not? Look at Anderson and Gallows. And you still look at Gallows and think of him as fucking fastest. But even when you talk about they brought him in, here's the club. Blah, blah, blah. And what exactly have they done with them? Exactly. You could say Finn Balor. Oh, he's a big fucking deal. I was like that, you're just going to hate on him. But the reality is, after all of this time, you cannot tell me he has anything other but an entrance and body paint a couple of times a year. That's it. After that, there is nothing special, unique, or different about him, and the WWE has done nothing to make him special, unique, or different. He is just another undersized jabroni. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. That's all he is. 
But you think now he's going to bring in Omega and he's going to bring in the Bucks of Suck and he's going to bring in Hangman Page and Skrull. And these guys are going to do big awesome shit and significantly move the needle for viewership and money for the WWE. you got to be insane. The WWE wouldn't even have the rights to the Bullet Club, first of all. Second of all, what the hell makes you think that they would come up with a concept that would be any damn good? Third of all, what the hell makes you think that they would do anything to keep these guys together and give them a run together? Vince's M.O. would be to sit there and bring them in, do stupid shit with them as a justification to then do whatever the fuck he wants to do with them because that's what Vince McMahon does. To sit there and think that these guys are going to move the needle is crazy. And as much as anything else, it's crazy because you're forgetting who runs the damn show in WWE. If Vince doesn't believe it, if Vince doesn't see it, if he doesn't buy into it, then it's not happening, period. And everybody should have learned that fucking lesson by now. So you think these guys are going to come in and Hunter and Stephanie are going to do wonders and get Vince to be like, Oh my God! I've seen the error in my ways! This son of a bitch is trying to revive the XFL almost two decades after it failed miserably the first time he lost millions upon millions upon millions of fucking dollars on it. But all of a sudden now he's going to change and he's going to do things so significantly different? You might think I'm an idiot, but who's being the idiot here if you actually think that? What the hell makes you think the WWE would do right by these guys? What makes you think that Vince would have any fucking clue what these guys are about or what he could do with them? What the hell makes you think that you get them away from their kind of segmented portion of wrestling that they do to a larger scale audience that this shit is going to work other than amongst the loudest and hardest of hardcore fans who are going to show up any fucking ways? I know, it doesn't make any sense. You might move a little more merch with them, so you might make a little more money on them in that respect. But in terms of actual viewership, in terms of domestic viewership specifically, in terms of viewership numbers, ratings, these guys will have zero impact. And in fact, the WWE's viewership numbers will continue to go down. If you want them in WWE, fine. But don't pretend like they're going to be fucking world shakers. They're going to be changing the game of WWE. You should be sitting there bitching in six months to a year from now when you realize just how lame they ended up being because of Vince McMahon.